descent position 27 hyphen 58 decimal 5 north 083 hyphen 22 decimal Hey, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show, and we're going to get back to scanners today. I haven't done any shows on scanner radios in quite a while, and mainly because I haven't been able to pick up any new scanners, new or used scanners. This is a used scanner, and I'm going to tell you why that I was pursuing this particular scanner. This is the Uniden model BC370CRS. There's a couple of different iterations of this one, uh, some other model numbers that are close to this one. This one is the most desirable one in this line of scanner radios. Now, the reason is, I'll tell you, okay? Number one, is that it has, and my lighting is not very good, that's a little better, it has an area here, a display here, for a clock, clock only. So you don't, the scanner doesn't have to share the display for the clock if it had one and the actual scanning frequencies and stuff like that. So this is always on. And then we have a big area and it, the display is pretty big. Um, it, it, is, it does have a shiny surface, so it is pretty reflective, so you have to get the light just right. It does have a pretty good backlight, and see if I can show you that. Okay, see that? It's a darn bright backlight. And you can have it just come on temporarily if you touch it, or you can have it come on permanently uh, until you turn it back off. And I've got it set now by pushing and holding the backlight button. Uh, it will stay on continuously. Let me see that today if I had something I could stick underneath this to hold it up. Then there. Now the display is a lot better for where my camera is. The other feature that this one has that's pretty unique in scanner radios, it, it, it has... The ability to scan the military band and let me look up here and tell you exactly what the military band is military air band to be more specific and if I can get to the page here I'll fumble fingers here okay here are all the bands it can scan I know it doesn't show up very well on my camera but if you look down here and I'm not gonna try to list them all because it it has a bunch of bands, including um, the AM band from 0.53 megahertz to 1.7. Now, it doesn't do the shortwave band except at the very top. It does 25 megahertz to 30 megahertz. So, that's not the one I was excited about and the reason for getting this. The reason I was excited about this particular scanner was it has a military air band which goes from 225 megahertz to 380 megahertz. And um, I'm lucky in that we have several uh, military air, air, airports, military airports. We have McDill, which is just across the bay from me. And then in the central Florida, we have um, another couple of airports, military airports, and there's also a bombing practice range, Avon Park it's called, or Avon Practice Range. I don't know, one of those, one of those names, not, not particularly that. And it also has um, the weather bands, if you want to listen to the weather service and NOAA weather service. It also will go up beyond 512 megahertz. Now, back in these days when this came out, and I, don't, I think it was like maybe 2005, I'm guessing, um, they were just starting to add, or had just been adding, the bands above 5.2 megahertz. And the reason being is that there were public service bands up, up above that. 
Uh, so there was a lot of uh, commercial traffic. Also, the police fire and EMS had moved up to that band, up to 800 and some megahertz. But then, after they had done that, after a couple of years, they went to trunking. It's another way of broadcasting and communicating, of which you needed what's called a trunking scanner. This is not a trunking scanner. It will tune this, the frequencies up in the trunking range, but it can't follow. It doesn't have the decoding and following capability of following trunking systems. So you can hear intermittently pieces of communications. But since it doesn't have the chunking capability, it, it doesn't follow the station as it switches from one channel to another. So it doesn't do trunking. Now, that brings up a, a sad situation for me. Okay, a couple years ago, and I've lost track of time, a couple years ago, local Pinellas County Fire and EMS and police and uh, the Clearwater uh, also, the Clearwater Police went to a digital system. So it required a digital, a scanner that had digital decoding capability, of which there are. You can buy those. And they're kind of expensive. They're tip, uh, typically, it's easy for me to say, they are typically uh, $400 and up, maybe as high as seven hundred dollars depending on their capability well i can't justify paying that kind of money so i was lucky in that there is a person that is following at least one of those and that's the pinellas county fire ems he doesn't follow police and he doesn't follow clearwater police and so i was able to use my pc or my tablets and I could listen to those, uh, the, to the Pinellas County Fire EMS track it, traffic via his scanner, which he had connected to the internet, which you could get to via several ways. One was uh, radio reference, which now is broadcastify. So I was listening to it that way. Not a problem. I, I did miss the fact that I couldn't get the sheriff. He didn't choose to rebroadcast the sheriff communication. So I was okay. Well, I was doing a quick review of my Echo, my Amazon Echo Dot 2. And I was able to set it up to receive that station. Well, a couple of days ago, it became intermittent. And it, would, it was there and it would drop out. It was... The service was pretty bad with that station. Well, he has since taken it off the air. So if I tell Alexa to go tune that station, it will come back and say that, that station is no longer connected or something like that. So I've lost that avenue to listen to the local fire and EMS. So hopefully he will get back on the air, but there's no reassurance that he will. So that means that I'm going to have to start looking for a digital scanner, a, a scanner that will decode these digital signals, and so I can listen to them directly. I'm going to have to try to find one used, uh, even used, they go for about $300. And the problem I have is I don't know that much about them. So I don't know what the minimum I need is. You know, I don't want to get one of those six, seven hundred dollar ones that will, you know, do everything. I'm trying to find out what what is the minimum scanner that I can get, minimum as far as cost, scanner I can get that will follow the Pinellas County Fire and EMS, which is now digital. So that's another situation and something I've got to work on. So anyway, getting back to this guy, he has a lot of capabilities. Uh, many are just capabilities that your typical newer scanner would get. Now these scanners, this particular scanner, you can still buy new, 
and they're about a hundred dollars new. Um, I was able to get this one used, but it looks brand new. It's missing um, one component. If I go back here in the beginning here, it tells you all the pieces that it normally comes with. It normally comes with um, the scanner, a telescopic antenna, which I do have, but I'm using an external antenna right now. That's another thing. I don't have um, access to a good all-band antenna. My two discone antennas, are uh, they go upstairs in my office upstairs. One's used for that ship tracker uh, module. The other one is used for other things. So I don't have a good all-band scanner antenna coming into my workshop down here. So I'm using one that I experimented with or experimenting with, which is a TV antenna. It's claimed to be an HD TV antenna. Well, I don't think there's anything really that's an HD antenna. It's any, anyway, so that's what I'm using right now. And it, I'm not getting the air traffic, the military air traffic from the central part of Florida. Number one, um, we got the wrong antenna. Number two, that antenna is not very high. Um, so I got that's another problem I got to work on. Um, it did also come with an AM loop antenna, an external antenna that you can hook in the back here. I didn't get that with it. I've got a number of those loop antennas that I've gotten with shortwave radios. Not a big deal. And it comes with an AC adapter, which it came with the Uniden AC adapter. Now, the other situation that I've noticed is that on the band that I want to listen to, which is the military air, this radio is really susceptible to noise. I, um, I had, when I first got it set up and got it going, I had it scan that military air, and it kept getting hits, and it was noise. And it would, it would go about... 10 megahertz and it'd get another hit and stop and wouldn't move on. And I quickly found out that my, when I have my computer here and my monitor on, that's creating noise in those frequencies and they get into the radio. I've got shielded coax uh, cable coming in, so it's, I don't think it's getting it that way. I think it's directly getting into the radio electronics and causing um, that interference. So right now, with the scanner setting on my workbench, I can't have the radio. I can't have the radio on and the computer and monitor. On. So that's that's the way that is. Always something. It's always something. Um, the clock the clock function has several sub functions that you can control the radio with the clock when the, when the radio comes on and stuff like that. What else is unusual about this? And, and it has, of course, it tunes the old TV frequencies, which are not operable anymore or not usable anymore since the government edicted that they had to go to digital. Don't ask me why. There's probably some subtle reason, except they could sell new TVs by doing that. I think that's all that really stands out about this particular radio. Um, like I say, it has a clock function that will either come on with a beep, 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 or it will come on and turn, turn the radio on so you can listen to music or something, wake up to that. It uh, has 300 uh, memory locations that you can store frequencies in, nice display. Um, these are multi-function keys up here. It also allows you to select automatic service bands, they call it, to search. And one of them is the uh, air band, military air band. Um, there's the ham bands that will search for you automatically. Overall, it's a pretty nice scanner. Good, pretty good sound. It's, it's probably of a small speaker, but it's pretty good sound. Of course, you know, you're mainly listening to 
uh, voice, so you don't have to have high fidelity. I think that's about it. It's not, you can't, it's not, uh, what am I trying to say here? Oh, I'm trying to say it's not, you can't control it with a computer. There's no computer interface, like some of the new news scanners uh, that you can control with your computer. So I think that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it's about it. So I uh, just want to show you, to you, finally got a different scanner. Like I say, this is a used scanner I got off of eBay. I've been looking for this scanner for over a year, trying to get a deal on it. Um, there's tons of these out there, but they're, they're kind of in demand. So they typically go for $60 and up. I was trying to get one for 50 or down, and I succeeded, and I got a nice one. So that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, once again, thank everyone for using my Amazon store. I saw some purchases were made this week after one of my shows. I appreciate that. Uh, again, I don't know who buys things from my store. I only know what is bought so if you want to drop me an email and you know just say hey you know I, I did my purchase show up see that's the other thing um, you have to go through my store for me to get a credit and once you go through my store which is just a website that's all it is whatever you buy you, you know you may have selected an item and that took you to Amazon and you could, it could actually delete that item. So you could, if you wanted to buy, say, uh, some bird seed, and you wanted me to get a credit for it, you can go to my Amazon store. You can select an item, and then say buy. That will take you to the regular Amazon store, and then you can delete that from your shopping list. I'll call it, and put the bird seed on there. And buy that, and I get. A small credit for the bird seed. So, and this is um, this is what I do with my Amazon commissions. They call it is they give me a credit, and with that credit, I buy things to reveal my show from Amazon. I didn't get this from Amazon because uh, I got this off of eBay. I got this with the little bit of money I make from YouTube. Not much, but it's enough to buy, you know, things under $100 every couple months. So that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.